Learning About presents Figurative Language. Have you ever heard someone say that time was money? Or told someone to call you back because you were all tied up? Do your parents complain that money doesn't grow on trees? If these expressions sound familiar, then you already have some experience with figurative language. In this movie, we will explore some of the common forms of figurative language, including metaphors, similes, personification, hyperbole, and more. The most common form of figurative language is the trope. All figures of speech which change the typical meaning of a word or words for rhetoric effect can be considered a trope. The primary trope is a metaphor. A metaphor describes one thing as being another. But the reader understands that this is not so. The metaphor makes a comparison that helps us see an object or a person in a new way. Look at the two sentences. Which one is a metaphor? The moon is covered with clouds, so that is a literal description and therefore not a metaphor. What makes the second sentence a metaphor is that the moon is not actually a ghost ship. But the comparison between two seemingly unconnected things evokes an image that is more powerful than simply stating, it was a cloudy night. Next, let's look at a simile. A simile is a type of metaphor. In a simile, an explicit comparison is made. It uses comparative words such as like, as, or resembles. Personification is another example of a trope. In personification, Animals, nature, objects, and ideas are given human qualities. Dawn can reach out fingers, and death extends invitations. And if you've ever been hungry enough to eat a horse, you will understand the concept of hyperbole. Hyperbole is an extravagant exaggeration for effect. Sometimes hyperbole is intended to be dramatic. More often the intent is meant to be humorous or outrageous. Unlike metaphors, similes, and personification, hyperbole is not making a comparison. Metonymy is a trope in which one noun is substituted for another noun, with which it is closely associated. It could be substituting the author for his work, the cause for the effect, or the symbol for the thing signified. In this famous quote, the pen substitutes for communication through words, and the sword stands for violence with weapons. Did Antony want the ears of his countrymen? <laughs> of course not. He was interested in getting their attention. This line from Julius Caesar is an example of synecdoche. This is a figure of speech in which the part is used for the whole or vice versa. This short video could never cover all the different figures of speech. There are many more examples for you to explore. Begin by checking out the resources associated with this module. And, as you read, look for examples of figurative language. Try to ascertain what the author is trying to convey. Use well-crafted figures of speech in your own writing to create a specific effect or impression. But be sure to avoid clichés. These are figures of speech that are so overused as to be relatively meaningless.